Tonight, a Larry Barker investigation he has pursued for four years. It's a real life story that has all the makings of a Hollywood blockbuster. Mysterious antiquities worth millions of dollars hidden away in Albuquerque for years. Where did these priceless relics come from and where are they stashed in New Mexico? Here's Larry's investigation, Secrets of the Tomb. It's all quite hush-hush. Rare antiquities worth tens of millions of dollars stashed in a nondescript government building under lock and key. Could it be looted treasure? Well, it's a tale reminiscent of an Indiana Jones adventure, complete with mysterious foreign benefactors, international intrigue, and priceless artifacts hidden away. The decision was made just to close off that building to the public. I thought they were beautiful. They are, they are, they are works of art. We're talking about massive carved stone sculptures that once graced palatial tombs of mighty imperial emperors in China and Korea hundreds of years ago. Because of their massive size and exorbitant cultural value, these museum quality monoliths are rarely seen outside Asia, but they've been hidden away in Albuquerque for years. Let's go back. In 2006, a mysterious Japanese businessman named Hitoshi Hoshi approached then Albuquerque Mayor Martin Chavez. As a gesture of friendship, Mr. Hoshi offered to loan the city his priceless collection of rare Chinese and Korean antiquities. Shortly thereafter, Mr. Hoshi shipped his stone artifacts weighing 85 tons from Japan. They were set up in an unmarked building at the city's botanical garden. Catherine Hubbard was in charge. She retired last year. It was a, a big deal to get, to get them here. They came on a flatbed truck. They were crated and we got a forklift to get them off the the truck and then we had to take down some of the windows in our showroom to get them in. At a public ceremony, Mayor Chavez thanked Mr. Hoshi for loaning his collection to the city. Asian antiquities that once graced the foothills of Mount Fuji, surrounded by cherry trees and a solemn cemetery, now rest in the shadow of the Sandias, surrounded by desert cactus and a zoo train. That was 12 years ago. Today, Mr. Hoshi's artifacts are in storage, engulfed in controversy. Peer through smudge windows, and you'll catch a glimpse of regal Asian carvings worth tens of millions of dollars unceremoniously lined up in a locked city building gathering dust. What happened? Well, city officials may have been a bit hasty in accepting Mr. Hoshi's loan. You see, even today, little is known about the wealthy Japanese art patron. For example, why would he ship a treasure trove of Asian art from Japan to a botanical garden in the American Southwest? Well, there are some clues that Mr. Hoshi's motives may have been more than just a gesture of friendship. For example, shortly after the artifacts arrived here, Hoshi hit up the mayor's office for a $15 million personal loan. Hoshi offered his art collection as collateral. The deal was never seriously considered. And at the same time Albuquerque was displaying his prized relics, Mr. Hoshi quietly offered them for sale through a Canadian art broker. The asking price, $91 million. Once the antiquities were uncrated in Albuquerque, city employees weren't quite sure what to do with them. First, Chinese and Korean artifacts don't fit in with the mission of the biopark. Second, nobody knew anything about them. They arrived without any documentation. And third, there's the question of liability. Because no one bothered to arrange for insurance, taxpayers are on the hook in case something happens to this valuable art collection. Since they were on loan to us, they were on our property, they were in our care, that the city would be responsible for any damages. Rick Janser was the city's biopark manager. He retired last year. I believe they valued them in the tens of millions of dollars, and that's not something that we really wanted to assume 
as the, you know, under the city liabilities. The mystery behind these ancient monoliths goes back 80 years. According to Hoshi, Japanese railroad tycoon Kaichiro Nezu acquired them from Chinese and Korean archaeological sites in 1937 during the Japanese occupation of the Asian continent. Hoshi says he bought the collection in 1961 from a private museum in Tokyo. A federal investigation determined the Hoshi statues may have been looted or stolen in the 30s from ancient Asian tombs. Chinese government representatives say China has never authorized anybody to send these relics abroad. The Korean Cultural Heritage Administration claims these statues are the cultural property of Korea. I think that the city needs to be very worried. There are a lot of issues surrounding the statues that are unresolved. David Phillips is interim director for UNM's Maxwell Museum. He is familiar with the Hoshi artifacts. Part of museum ethics is that you do not possess objects that you think might have been stolen. Now the problem with these pieces is the chain of title is, is mostly lost. We don't know where they came from, we don't know quite how they got to Japan, but there's the possibility that these objects were acquired in violation of the Hague Conventions and therefore we're dealing with a war crime. It has been a war crime for more than a hundred years to loot a country's cultural treasures. Due to the questionable origin of the stone artifacts in 2010, the city decided to return them to their Tokyo-based owner. Mr. Hoshi promised to have the massive stone carvings shipped back to Japan. That was eight years ago. Today, the valuable stone relics are still here. In fact, the city has been storing tens of millions of dollars in privately owned antiquities it doesn't want and it can't get rid of. Despite scores of letters, emails, and meetings, Hoshi family members have refused to take possession of their valuable relics. In 2014, the city decided to have a judge force removal of the Hoshi artifacts. A complaint titled City of Albuquerque versus 16 Asian Stone Sculptures was drafted but never filed in court. Last year, the city threatened to move the artifacts from storage to the zoo's Asian elephant exhibit. However, the incoming Keller administration decided not to put the statues on public display. As a um, tax-paying citizen, a private citizen now, uh, it just infuriates me that um, my taxes are going to store these priceless antiquities. I just think that the city's been housing millions of dollars worth of antiquities free of charge. Shell Sanchez is director of Albuquerque's Cultural Services. What do city taxpayers get out of storing this Asian art collection in a locked building? I do not see um, a benefit at this point for the city of Albuquerque to continue um, the loan of these statues, which is why we are working diligently to move them off of city property. Now, the Albuquerque City Attorney's Office has served a formal notice of abandonment on Hitoshi Hoshi. The wealthy Japanese businessman has 65 days to remove his loaned art collection from city property, or the ancient carvings will be deemed abandoned. If Mr. Hoshi fails to claim his property by the end of October, Albuquerque will assume title to the Asian art. Hitoshi Hoshi's granddaughter, Eri Hoshi, who acts as a family spokesperson, did not respond to a request for comment. Larry Barker, KRQE News 13.